Okay, uh, so where you guys last left off, uh, Karnoth got shot down <clears throat> doing his mission during the, the Fortress. You still have your bomber crew, and you guys have intel on the other tank formation heading in that general location. About 2,000 plus tanks. Possibly. You haven't got an exact number. You know, it's a lot of tanks. More than 100. Less than 10,000. Uh, All right. Didn't we send oh, you something did, you after did. those tanks? Uh, you sent a drone. Bomber scouting. wing. Yeah. No, no. Okay, we were gonna send the bomber wings after them, but that's in another few days, I think, when they're ready. Yes. Another. It's another two days, if I recall. Three days from when the dreadnought got online again. You spent yeah. the first well, day after the dreadnought. Got online to deal with the fortress. Uh, the the Imperial forces won the air battle. The initial air battle. And they have... Yeah, 19 bombers ready to go. Let me double check what there are. Or 20, he had 21 all together. And he's waiting for them to get all good to go. All right, so what are you guys' plans from here? I think you guys were last left off. You guys are in this location here. Yeah, we were going to get Karn off. So who's all going to get retrieve Karn off? Would we all not go and do that? I don't know. You guys all want to go at the I time? imagine everybody except the Dreadnoughts and the people in the camp. Yeah, probably that. Uh... In what shape uh, is me and my crew? Uh, are my like are we, are we all fine? Are we bruised? What what's the kind of situation? Uh, so you're the sole survivor. The rest of your crew died in the crash. All right. Okay. Classic National Guard. <laughs> Sorry, what are they called again? Guardsmen. Yeah. There you go. Guardsman, classic guardsman. If it's only me that's alive, uh, I I could probably and like there's a such a huge force uh, coming in my direction, I could just uh, evade them and meet up with the rest of the crew or with the team, and and then we can probably attack the the capital or some other place. Uh, I think we're still waiting a few days to attack the capital. Yep. Uh, all right. If I remember right, each of these tank things is like a hundred tanks. Yep. And then they also have artillery. Well, we, we can't really do anything about them until we have uh, support from the air, from the skies. Uh, yeah. So, like, yeah, like uh, that's why we're waiting. And it's best to not group up uh if i if i if i want to evade them so i karnov will just try to stealthily evade the approaching tank formation or like uh, just try to get away from there as quickly as possible uh if uh, yeah i don't think the entire formation is coming at you it's probably just a smaller amount or the entire thing In the distance, as you're... Go ahead and do your stealth checks as well. How fast uh, is your I mean, character, by the way? How fast is your character? Uh, very fast. <laughs> yeah, so you probably uh, get out of there. You probably get out of there before they get on top of that location itself. Yeah. Uh, probably like... Way. Which one again? Uh, we probably wouldn't know... If uh, Karnoth's crew or even Karnoth is still alive or not. Nope, we don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's uh, like faster than uh, 240 meter meters per minute or like whatever, the 140 kilometers per day uh, in the narrative movement chart because uh, of the. Uh, they're uh, jump 16, back. They're, yeah, they're only 16 kilometers, so you'll probably outpace the tanks as they get there. So go ahead and roll uh, awareness as you're 
getting away. All right. I'm sure you're observing as you're fleeing. Um, yeah, I'm keeping tabs on what's happening around me. Uh, modifiers? Minus 30. You don't see it. I don't see anything. You, yep, you're just in such a panic after that uh, chaotic crash and dismemberment. I'm just focused on getting out of there, yeah. Yeah, and the battle that just that you ensued over the fortress to take it down. So, you just got out of there. Yep. And then, how fast is your guy again? How fast would he get across 16 kilometers? And are you communicating with your team about your whereabouts? 16 kilometers, probably an hour. Okay. So an hour's time, you guys have probably already have taken off to go rendezvous with him, I imagine. So you're going to try to link up with him as he's coming your guys' way? Sure. Okay, so we'll cut that time in half. All right. Karnoff, you see in the distance the one of the dropships coming down descending with your glorious team awaiting news from you um i report back uh that the the crew is dead and that there are uh, enemy vehicles approaching that is all i report uh, yeah, so your character also reports back on the Battle of the Fortress. Um, I kind of describe what your character saw. So, in the ensuing battle, when you took out that, what perceived as a jerry-rigged nuclear reactor, uh, it destroyed the following dam and caused a cascading flood downstream. Yep, all me did that. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you and your team did, yes. Is that what he calls the sword and shield? That, no, that's that's two separate teams. That ah, yep. And as you were leaving, you you noticed that the the orcs were building uh, AA defenses around the fortress, but they did not get up in time. By the time you got there. And also, so I then ask, oh, yep. Yeah, yeah. One other thing, because you're actually pretty close to that battle now. Uh, when you're flying overhead, you did see over in that direction of that place you first encountered a ensuing battle proceeding. You saw artillery fire going in and coming out of this location. Mm, that's all I saw. Only the artillery fire. Nothing yeah. else. Yeah, yeah you're, okay. just, you're high up and focused on your mission. All right. I I also report that, uh, and then I uh, ask the rest of the crew, "What's uh, what's this like? When are we going to attack the capital to take out the war boss?" Probably as soon as we regroup. Several days. Oh well, yeah, that too. Three days until the uh, bomber group of the main force. It was two, I think. Yeah. Oh, it's three total. One was... Yeah, three the... total, two from this point on. Yes. So this day, what are you going to be spending doing? You spent the first first half of your day recovering Karnoff. You have him. Because reinforcing defenses, possibly. Or maybe moving the artillery to a different position. Yeah, you still have your whirlwind batteries, too. Yeah, that's the artillery. Mm-hmm. I thought they were going to attack the uh, Space Force next. The what? So I thought they were going to attack the uh, spaceport next. Yeah, they got to get into position way over here. Yeah, and then if you guys remember, there is the enemy artillery that is stationed there. 30k on fire range, I think. So yep. they got to be...
and you have the dreadnoughts and you have the transfer charts if i recall and you guys are down to two transports And are you scouting the area out ahead of time before you send in your uh, forces? Might as well. I think we did that with the drones and there wasn't anything there, but it was days ago. Yep. How many drones do you guys have left? Uh, I think 10, and we were going to use them to scout the Orc Fortress capital for the artillery, so we probably don't want to use them anymore. Okay. Uh, I think we well, only lost one, right? I lost a lot more than one. Hey, you weren't here last session. We had you? 40. Oh. I think we've lost 28 to 30. Uh, we a might lot have of them, two spare. Yeah, a lot of them to the AA defense camp, a lot of them to the Orc capital and the spaceport. So just scouting out and getting intel. Oh, just right. FYI, this camp here doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, that's why I the think that's why the... this is dead. Yeah, in fact, I'll I'll put a uh, I'll put a yellow line through everything that's destroyed. Boop, boop. You have no intel on on the forces there. The last intel you got was they were getting artillery striked. The, that they were getting artillery striked, and they also were returning fire with artillery. Yeah, we haven't heard anything about it, or heard it, in days, so. Hmm. Well, Karnoth's forces just came, and he reported back that, what he saw on this day. Oh. Yeah, so that, you have fresh intel on what's going on there. Okay, what's going on there? He knows of the artillery fight. So do we. We he was here when we found it out. He he. We he we rolled good perception checks and we heard the yeah yeah in the distance fight. yeah first couple of days this is this day the, the, the him crashing and you retrieving him all happened the same day so this day yeah. the artillery fight still happening and that your forces are also firing back. That's okay, well we might want to go help them then. That's just so you have all the intel available to you, what's going on. Uh, Might as well. Sure. Did both tank formations move over to that crash site, or where'd the other one go? You guys don't know, but the other tank formation you definitely see on the horizon, where you, from where you guys are at, taking off. You see them swarming which, the area. Which direction? Oh, uh, they came from this direction, and they're right there. They swarmed on top of Karnas. Uh, right, you said they were taking off, so I assume that meant they were leaving now. No, 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 no. Like, like, they are, like, going fast. And that, in Karnas' general direction, they're burning and looting the dropship. <sighs> you guys can see that from the air, because you guys are not too far off. You guys are within visual distance. That Yeah, you guys are in visual distance. You can see them looting and, like, lobbing some shells in your general direction, but it's in very uh, ineffective fire. Are we under tree cover currently? We should be. Yeah, we're like 20 km away. Where you picked up Karnoff now. Like when you oh, oh. Him, when you picked him up, you guys are 8 kilometers. You guys are within visual visual distance to them they're with their tanks and they're just lobbing shells in all directions it's ineffective but you know they're there if that makes sense like it's a rowdy bunch of orders. lobbing shells in all directions and lobbing shells in your direction are two very different words exactly well, but these, even these are orcs so even they're if very... they're even if they're shooting at us eight kilometers is a really tough shot even for like yes but if they see this see us going a certain direction then we can't go well, back to camp. Why don't we just go south and then swing around? There's water to the south. Exactly. I thought, aren't we on a ship? Like, did we bring a Thunderhawk, or are we on foot for this? No, you're on Thunder. I, I imagine you brought a Thunderhawk to pick up your comrade. That's what I'm saying. That'd be the fastest way to get him. Yeah. So we just head south, make them think we're going south, so they go south. And, and then they, they uh, drown themselves in the water. 
No, they're not that dumb, but... Um... <laughs> I don't know. If I think there needs to be an intelligence check. I will, yeah. <laughs> I, will, I will do this. So I will do, I will do this for you guys. So the commander, uh, the commander will make the intelligence check. <laughs> uh oh. And he's gonna get a plus thirty because. Uh, yeah, nice. Oh my god. Plus thirty of oh negative ninety one. He rolled a ninety one. Nice. So Dude. let me wait, GM roll. So he has a hundred tanks under his command. So he's gonna GM roll. He's gonna fall, follow the plane. <laughs> so he orders. Oh my god. So twenty six of his tanks go into the kaplunk. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> just, just made the bombing run twenty five percent easier. Yeah. Uh, him. Him. Uh, him along with twenty five other tanks. What kaplunk? And the other half, kind of like, oh, I'm leader now, and all that stuff. <laughs> also, what you're saying is, is some of the other tanks are now destroying each other to try and take dominance over who leads the column. No, you don't see that. Hey, oh. boss, we've got tanks, not submarines. Well, those orcs are dead, so... Don't... Gargle, gargle. They literally went off the cliff. Blah, 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 blah. I must say, uh... Pretty good. Unless they believe they can breathe underwater. It doesn't work that way. But anyways. Oh. <laughs> unless a deep GM decides it so. Yeah. Alright. Damn. Okay. Imagine uh, mass eight. ditching a quarter eight. of your tank regiment in the ocean because your commander told you to go there. Oh, the plane! Yep, follow the plane. Whip over the edge. Now, there might be one orc there who's like, What's a good thing I brought my scuba gear down here? <laughs> you never know when you need your scuba gear. And he'll be the only one to survive. Sure. But, uh, yeah, 26 out of the 100 or so tanks uh, perished in that ensuing chasing of the Thunderhawk. <laughs> you guys just saw lobs of shells passing by, blowing around you guys. And you guys were like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you just watched this. Dramatic falling of tanks like a waterfall of steel and metal fall into the ocean. Explode <laughs> everywhere. Uh, that's incredible. Are you guys going to keep trying to do this? No. Okay. <laughs> I think we just swing around and go back to base. Okay. I don't know. We could drown their entire tank regiment. Or they get smart and just follow us. Yeah. Yeah. Like you, you, sh you can only underestimate an orc so much before you're you've dropped down to below their level. Yes. Yeah. Eventually they catch on and kick your ass. It's better to just take the initiative right now and go help out the artillery. Actually, hold. Let me do a GM roll here. What the what the orcs what the orc formation decides to do, because they know there's the water's there. Cool, they're going in the direction I I put them at. <clears throat> All right, so you guys return back to the other Thunderhawk and the makeshift encampment in the tree line. And then you hear from the guardsman, Sire, what are your orders? <clears throat> I'm getting mighty famished. Follow that tank squadron. No, I'm kidding. Well, then eat a snack well, and we... then prepare for the eventual assault on the fortress of this, the, the cap, the big orc place. Yeah, what he said. And he I kinda concur. Like, kind of nods his head. Did you, did you, yeah, did you guys bring any food by chance? I mean, we would have rations, right? Orcs are food. Didn't one of the planes come with food? But uh, I don't think it did. Take no. that one. I would like to uh, look around and see if there's any uh, edible stuff uh, in the trees around me. Every single tree around us is a banana tree. I'm going to roll for survival. Go modifier minus 60 minus 60 holy shit all right 
Yeah, no. Yeah, no edible Fontana that you know of. Fontana? Yeah, or what do they call it? Fauna. There you go, that word. You mean flora? Fauna is animals. Fauna is animals, yeah. Uh, yeah, fauna and flora. There you go. That flora's plants. Hey, he's looking for food in general. Alright. So he, he's found none. Oh boy, I have decent int now, but well, no... Well, if it's at a minus 60, I can't make that check. I mean, because... luckily... Because we're space marines, we can just keep recycling our piss and shit. But the question yeah. is, can we, uh... <laughs> we can recycle guardsmen for other guardsmen. That's a thing, right? Uh, it sounds like heresy. It sounds yeah. like the rations they eat regularly. Yeah, he tells you in our haste, <laughs> we... In our, in our haste, and also to keep uh, things light for your assault... They ditched, like, 99% of their rations. They had enough for a couple days. Oh, my God. God damn it, Guardsman. Why do you let us down? <laughs> well, time to go poach some orcs, I guess. I guess you can eat whoever decided you should ditch your rations. That'll work. Yeah. <laughs> Are you telling the Guardsman <laughs> that? No. <laughs> he will do it. Uh, he kind of points at Cardoth, then, and he kind of points at him. He told us. He told us. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. I remain silent. Well, yeah, you have a crew of 20 on each each vessel. So Cardoth, is this true? I remain silent. I shake my head. Well, he's not admitting to it, so he must not have done it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll roll here, see how long they can last with zero rations. Cool. I, and I know how long they'll last. Are orcs good food? They are a food. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, we. Uh, I think in the lore, uh, it, the orcs are edible. Uh, you can eat them. Yeah. Uh, if you cook them. Right. Um, Who wants soggy orcs in tin cans? And the, yeah, you got so What about that air base we went to? Do they have any rations? You guys checked when you guys were there. We didn't do much of I don't investigating think so. on our own. Yeah, I don't think we would have checked. To see if there was rations. That was like the furthest thing from our mind. Same with theirs. Also, if I recall, that's just kind of like the last gather point for whatever ships or uh, planes are left over. So I doubt they have uh, a huge stockpile of rations if they have any at all. Yeah, so it's up to you guys. You guys want to push your guardsmen all the way through or do rations. So I'll leave that up to you guys. Let's do a small well, we got hunt. two days, so we should at least look for food. Uh, two days but then again, we out. won't be here for that long. Uh, I, they could survive for like a couple of days without food, if we don't find any. We're stuck waiting two days for the planes to get ready to attack, so... Sure. But we don't know what to look for, besides orcs. So, uh, only going, uh, like, uh, Karnoff's suggestion would be just to loot the, the previous, uh, battle locations where the orc corpses are, which would make for a food to eat. Mm -hmm. They did, they, the guardsman does inform you that a couple of their guardsmen already perished due to lack of food, so. Why well, there's some food attention. for you. Eat those. <laughs> That's why I bring it to your attention. He seems very hesitant to even mention it, but... Ah. Thunk will lead expedition to hunt some orcs for noms. Uh, I'm of Thunk I if you want to live. I will accompany Thunk, just in case. Alright. 
You guys just scavenging for scout parties then? Yeah. All right. Roll okay, so these blue circles, those were former hive cities, right? Yep, that's a hive city. Old. Uh, in fact, let me make sure I got this. Boop. Okay, well, I'm going to fake that. I'm coming with you guys, so I'll also roll for survival. I was wondering if anybody wanted to go loot an old city. I am not trained in survival at all, by the way. I have plus 20 so in survival, just, and it's still terrible. I was just auto-failed. Oh you my go. god, I crit failed. <clears throat> you be so I succeeded. I have yeah. succeeded before Thomas goes off the deep end with this. One of no, us no, did succeed. No, I know that. No, no, I'm not going off the deep end here. Uh, Virlo just gets lost and comes back with uh, basically... The master scout. He comes back with uh, <laughs> mushrooms. Hey, oh, hey guys, I found mushroom. some mushrooms. Virlo finds these. Very edible mushrooms. And a handful <laughs> of guards die. Um, but Thun <laughs> comes back. He actually finds... Because it seems that... He comes back with a truck. There's just like seven mooses in the back. No, no, no. He comes back with imper <laughs> imperial supplies that he found scattered throughout around uh, Karnas location. Apparently there was another dropship that crashed some time ago, months ago. I had all the rations you guys will ever need. Damn. With your roll there. So. Dunk found the good Problem stuff. Yep. There's nothing but Twinkies in here. It's crazy. <laughs> They've been here for centuries. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, yeah. Uh, Virlo, you kill about... Let me see. Let me let me roll. Oh my god, dude. Uh, you kill about... Uh, good car enough. Good car enough. Uh, like, uh, try to... Taste test it before Virlo gives it to the rest of the guards. If you want to die or be poisoned, I mean, he's a space yeah. He's space gonna be man. fine. Yeah. Uh, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yes, you gonna taste test it first? <laughs> yeah, the toughness test. What's the modifier? No modifier. You taste it. Tastes edible to you. Oh. Tastes okay. fine. Yeah. Remember, you can <laughs> literally <laughs> bite people's limbs off, and you have acid spit. Yeah, yeah. I, I just I just say just give a thumbs up. Yep, good. Yep, and they agree, and they all eat, and they all die immediately. <laughs> they all start vomiting out and hallucinating and talking about. I stand there like, uh oh, yeah. and they just like toss oh. it behind. Me. God. <laughs> I come back Dude. driving a truck. Oh, oh, they're so tuckered out. They're sleeping now. But the real question is, do the mushrooms look like? Uh, Poison mushrooms from Super Mario World. Oh, no. no, they were clearly orc shrooms. <laughs> right. Baby orcs. You fed the baby orcs. <laughs> Do you guys want to inspect them uh, what they are? Sure, why not? Would that be uh, uh, survival or would that be like Xeno's lore? Xeno's lore. Ooh, I can All roll right. that. If I can find my character sheet. Uh... So plus twenty for moth. So this is a basically an orc nightshade that the orcs plant on worlds to destroy uh, indigenous food stock. Oh, it's edible, oh. Ed that. edible to them, not edible to anyone else. You only know this because uh, you had you're looking through the reports during your previous encounter with these particular orcs. God, I rolled a hundred and it was still point eight. Or who got the lore? Was it Karnoth? Yeah, it was Karnoth. Okay, then Karnoth got the information then. I get information by tasting it. Yeah, I remember it. Yeah, yeah. I got into like the memories of that mushroom. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is the uh, orc nightshade, and you saw the orc as he planted it and watered it and everything. He had his little uh, sunflower hat on as he planted a bunch of. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yep. Wait. Or put like a propeller hat and like a lollipop on the. Yep. Wait. Yeah. So you're telling me that a mushroom has memories of being planted and watered? <laughs> yes. It's so loved and cared for. <laughs> it's it's so mama. loved and cared for, the mushroom became sentient. Oh shit. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Enough for him to know what's going on. That's got to be the worst. Like you did that mushroom a service. But anyways, um, yeah, you know it's a, it's a, it's a, 
Weapon of War, it goes mainly unnoticed because it looks very similar to other mushrooms that humans would normally typically eat on this planet. So that would explain why those four guardsmen ate it so willingly. Because the one, they're hungry, and two, it looked like what they would normally eat. So. I wonder how many guardsmen have died this nightshade. Four? Oh, well, you mean in total? No, yeah, like in total. Inconceivable to you guys. But anyways, four yeah. died in your guys' presence. <laughs> Their faces turned uh, purple, and they uh, vomited. They turned their green. Guts and, out. Yeah, turned green, vomited out blood, and fell down. <laughs> and the was like, oh, they're sleepy. <laughs> Bit more green. Uh, uh, well, the rations are gonna last for longer now. That's good. Yeah. Well, Thunk's, Thunk's supply of rations will supply you guys basically indefinitely on this mission, so you guys are fine now. If we had put a number, it'd be uh, for for the amount of supplies you brought was enough for a small regiment. So for these now thirty six individuals, it's basically years. So you're fine now. So, guards been eat up and they're all good to go. So that's day one. Okay. And as day one closes, hey, you guys going to stay in your position, take shifts, or are you guys going to be relocating your forces? Might be time to start relocating. I was thinking the same. Yeah, we've been in one place for too long. Yeah. So we begin relocating. Elevator music plays. So where are you guys heading to? Uh, south, I guess? Around the lake? Maybe? I guess, maybe maybe south would be a good, but yeah. yeah. I forget how fast we can move. Very fast. You know, Thunderhawk, you can literally close this distance and, like... Uh, we have minutes. two dreadnoughts. On board the Thunderhawk, yes. Neither of them can carry dreadnoughts. You downed the only ship that could. I don't think so. That was the one Karnoth was on. Only one of them came that was able to handle a dreadnought. No, you relocated the two on another dropship. And then the same thing with your other ones. And then you deployed the one that didn't carry any of those. I think that's how you guys did the loadout. And Karnoth won on the one that did not have that capability. So you guys are fine. Okay. I came over the uh, Thunderhawk too. Yeah. Yeah. Think, yeah. Well, yeah. You guys shifted stuff around. You basically emptied out the Thunderhawk. Uh, Karnoth was going to go in so he can lead the assault and destroy that dam. Because you guys would assume the Thunderhawk would be destroyed in the ensuing battle, possibly. So you guys didn't want to, you guys want to mitigate the damage done. So you're slower. Obviously, you're carrying more load on each vessel. Uh, instead of distributing them across three, you're, doing, you're distributing all your resources across two. Okay. Um, so. Go ahead and do an awareness check, all of you guys, for this first leg. Because you're going south, and then you guys are going this way? Or... Uh, here. Yeah. Okay, uh, of those that succeeded, as you're flying this way, you guys notice a giant dust plume in this general direction over here, moving south. What did you see as you guys are driving or flying down? Uh, are these mountains? What was your roll? Yes. You see that these are kind of sloped, jagged rocks, uh, mountainous terrain from your guys' tactical visor. As far as the entire layout of that little mountain range, you don't know. Mm. There could be passages. You'd have to get closer to inspect that. Uh, 
on one hand, it's risky to be so close to the enemy. Uh, on the other hand, we do have natural cover and a natural choke point. And you're plus also, water on both sides. You're also in the air, too. Yeah. These are Thunderhawks, right? Yep. You're in the you're in the air. You can literally go into space, too, with these yeah. things. Yeah, I, I was going to suggest, why can't we just pull a No Man's Sky where we just go up, go reposition to where we want in orbit, and then go back down? Yeah, you can. Totally can. There's no reason we have to fly over the terrain. Right. So the pilot informs you that there is a giant orc formation in orbit, so just be aware we take some risk going up so high. Well, we, we can go to a midpoint, still remain in atmosphere, but and he not goes, be I, close to ground. He says, aye, aye. And then he does, he does that maneuver. So where do you guys wish to drop yourselves? Uh, I guess we should help um. out these guys. Since they're getting artillery barraged, so we could probably land somewhere here. Maybe it's uh, like a pretty good hiding spot uh, with the rocks and all. Like it yep. makes good for natural camp. I don't know, and sure. it's close to the battle. Okay. Okay. So you guys gonna move over here? Yep. Okay. So you guys go just, up. Just. Just. Just wondering. We still have the uh, two whirlwind missiles. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're on the other We're... transport. You guys put two dreadnoughts in one transport, two whirlwinds oh, okay. in the other. Okay. They're, they're a tad bit slower, and the, the, the captain says it's straining the systems, but they can they can handle it. So They dump some cargo, but nothing... nothing well, there goes all the rations again. Yeah, I was <laughs> just going to say... No, no. No, no, they have the rations that, uh, distributed among the two vessels to supply them for uh, the campaign, so you guys are good. Uh, they just ditched useless stuff. So The dead the dead guardsmen bodies? They did that. And, uh, ammunition for personal rifles and pistols that they didn't need. Did they figure you guys would be doing the majority of the heavy lifting? Um, does that mean uh -oh. all the guardsmen are unarmed now? No, but a majority are. There's about, about a squad. Armed. A, a armed squad. God damn it. The rest are loading crew. Hey, they had to lighten the load somehow. They still have rifles, just no ammo. Because you guys notice this, as you guys were packing up the two vehicles and they're deploying Karnos forces, they're just lighting up the two Thunderhawks they did have and left the majority of their ammunition and other useless supplies at the camp. Uh, we could just uh, send a more of a scouting Thunderhawk just to scout out the potential camping place uh, with the guardsmen and whatnot. Uh, you want to relocate the whole uh, camp? And then, like, once we establish it, we can just transport everything we need, including the ammo, including, like, we can just take multiple trips. Uh, okay. All right. So the guardsmen agree, so they're going to do that. So, uh, go ahead and give me three awareness checks for the team that's going to deploy the other side. And then the other, we'll say your guys' the supply has moved unabated. So we'll move that. Who's doing square. awareness checks? Just Karnoff? Uh, okay. How many checks? Three? Yeah, just three. So you guys, as you guys are scouting out with your third hawks in the general area, uh, you see this formation of whatever it is, giant smoke and debris and dust over the course of the day going this direction, heading south. Well, that's probably the tank formation. That you, went don't missing. Know, you don't know what it is, but you see something. We've definitely seen dust clouds moving rapidly before, and it was a tank formation. So it's safe yeah. to assume it's that, again. 
I think it's a dust storm. We shouldn't worry about it. Yeah, it's just a uh, sandstorm, you know. The rude style. Yeah, you said what I was thinking. That was quite rude of you, but all right. So your captain informs you he's dropping off some supplies. So let me generate some supplies for you guys. It's a, another convoy of dropships here. Can you ask them if they have reinforcements like guardsmen? And guardsmen weapons since we threw a bunch of them away apparently. No, you didn't. You guys brought that with you. Because uh, you guys took your... Uh, Carlos wanted to take his time to bring troops and supplies, so they had one dropship go across, and the other one transport goods back and forth. Because the guardsmen were telling you they're just going to leave stuff behind to lighten the load, so... Yeah. yeah, bad choice. So, we didn't do that, and it took extra time. Easy peasy. Yep. Oh, hold on, let's see. Da, da, da. All right, I'm going to tell you what you guys have. I'm going to generate good old chat GPT here. Chad GPT. Well, it's nice because it's randomized, basically. Um, was there any request you want to give the captain as he's 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 here for a limited time? As we have a small one-hour window. Something to take out large amounts of tanks. Also, weapons and supplies for the infantry. More. I mean, you know, they need ammo. Not anymore. <clears throat> Actually, yeah. did the guardsmen have any anti-tank uh, weaponry? Uh, they do not. They weren't equipped with that. So that they... could be a possible thing. Yeah. Yeah. All I asked for is a way to take out a large amount of tanks. Yeah. That's up to them to figure out. Yeah, because the because your your uh tank... exterminatus understood taking out the planet. Hey, that'll work as long as we get off. Oh, <laughs> your thunk might be thinking that he could t he could contact his uh, um, inquisitor to do that at any time. You could. Uh, so your drop ships. I'm gonna put this. Well, lit I'm going to say it would kind of defeat the purpose of doing the whole mission to begin with. It very much would, which is why I think is not going to use Sternatus. I mean, if it gets the job done, it gets the job done. Ideally, Our mission was to assassinate the elderly orc guy. Who said nothing about saving the planet. Yeah, we need to assassinate him and uh, hopefully uh, we can devour his brain to get more information. Wow. Okay, that right there, that's fucking heresy. No, it's not. You don't I... need to devour the brain to get more information. Let's see. If you're a space oh, yeah. brain, you can just eat parts. Oh, I thought it was the brain. Never mind. No. Soul I... drinkers eat the brain. Yeah. Ah, good. okay. Yeah, I'm not a soul drinker. So, yeah. As far as you know. <laughs> well, that right there is enough now. <laughs> no. Goodbye, Virla. Nope. So there, yeah, I gave you a new handout called Reinforcements. Those are your available transports. You guys can choose two. What is it we're choosing right now? 
the transports are gonna make it through to you guys. The rest are gonna be shot down. So. Okay. Holy crap! We can have up to four dreadnoughts on this mission. Yes, dear. Uh oh, Boko's getting whipped. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm just making sure she's all right. She's been in the hospital all, all week. Oh shit! Sorry yeah. to hear that. It's all your fault. Send my uh, condolences. She ain't dead. Oh well. <laughs> I'll send her your regards. Yes, thank you. I'm thinking either four or five, as reconnaissance and. And or at weaponry. It's pretty good. And mobility. Virlo interjects, but we don't need reconnaissance. You have me. Pat, pat on the head. Yeah, we do, buddy. Yeah, we do. <laughs> uh, that's great. So within, within the hour, these, these additional transport reinforcements will descend to your location. Now they're just dropping off. You're not getting additional transports, so. Wait, hold on. Holding. Holding. Does number three's two dreadnought drop pods, each drop pod contains a pair of dreadnoughts? Am I reading that right? That's four more dreadnoughts. Yeah, they're gonna drop. They're gonna just drop drop pods in your location, basically. That's what that's what your ship is doing. It's coming by, boom, 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 and then yeah, you're not getting additional transports per se. So. You guys want me to put it up for a vote? I'm just making yeah. sure I'm reading the the that correctly. It's it's four dreadnoughts and not two dreadnoughts. That's correct. I'm cool Damn. with whatever, by the way. I don't need yeah. to vote. Yeah. Two pods, two pair each. Boom boom. That's much better than a single tank and a shield generator. Well, it's also three crates of anti-armor weaponry. In transport four. True. Which, you know, will provide all the troopers with the anti-tank mains. Hey, yep. Yeah, but that two crates of binoculars is a bad choice, though. <laughs> That's... I'm just like, mmm. Two whole crates of binoculars. Gee, thanks. <laughs> I mean... Could give them to the guards, to guardsmen to have yeah, them. Every uh, guard has a pair of binoculars now? Yeah. Nice. That'll Which help. One is, the, is that option <laughs> option? Is that one? No, it's I... option four. We don't want the... We don't actually want the binoculars. Well, yeah, so advanced reconnaissance, the gear for protecting enemy positions and hidden threats, so you guys could see enemy formations easier. Uh, greater distances with those. Oh, we all. What do you fucking do? That. Yeah, that's uh, that's what I can do. And you do that by scouting or looking, I guess. And you can see smoke plumes. This would give you more detailed information. And then, um, what's that angry space marine? He had that thing too, right? I think it's see through walls. Remember correctly? Okay, here's here's yeah, siege, aspects. siege aspects. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Here's a question I have. Since the um, artillery we have can have different weaponry in it, is transport ones crack missiles for the artillery, or is that just you can put those in the the those artillery? Yeah, that's literally they're missile tubes. So you can put any type of missile that goes in there. I were, but we were talking like the difference between ad and man pads. 
you know, one missile is very much larger than the other missile. Sure. So which kind of missile are we talking? Warwind? Whirlwind missile or Space Marine shoulder mounted missile? You can you can you can do either one. You make the decision. You guys want for your uh, whirlwinds or shoulder mounted? So there'll be your two options for those. I mean, okay. So hear me out. If we can get we two more whirlwinds, then we'll have four whirlwinds, all with uh, HE, and we can essentially level that what? city. Which one's whirlwind? What are you talking about? Whirlwinds aren't on the table here. Yeah. Oh, they're not. Okay, never no, mind. No. I was talking about two crates of missiles for the whirlwind batteries. They're crack missiles oh. with anti-armor missiles. Because right now we have like what one volley each of them, and then they're fucking done. Yep. This would give them at least make them anti-armor. But are they crack missiles for whirlwinds? Yeah, you that's can, that's what we were asking. And, and I said you can you can choose one or the other. So right. can we switch the crate of crack missiles for the crate of Auspex scanners in four? No. Yeah. Oh. Damn. Um, you can choose the size of missile. I say whirlwind size. If we even do one, the rest of the stuff in one's not really useful. You can choose two transports. You're not... No, I mean, the Vindicator Siege Tank would be useful. But... Oh, we can choose two transports, you say? But it is just a single tank. Uh, oh, we can choose two different transports? Well, if we do one and four, we have two tanks. Although, yeah. is two tanks better than four dreadnoughts? I don't think it is. No, I no. think three and four. Yeah, three and four would be the choices. Because three think. also gives us uh, some Storm Wardens. Some veteran yeah. Storm Wardens. Mm. And a full crate of power weapons that are relic grade. Oh, yeah. I mean... That and portable shield generators would help protect the uh, artillery crew, or uh, the stormwinds from anti-artillery. Uh, oh, it's a crate of shield generators. Okay, that's different. I wonder how big those shields are. Uh, so if I remember from correctly, the game they they defend pretty sizable area. It's not like a city size area, but you can defend tanks with these things. Can we yeah, defend, so, say, three four, dreadnoughts right? with them? Can we bolt them to the dreadnoughts? Yeah. Now we have five droidicas. The size of houses. Right. Yeah, I say three and four, if we're able to choose two. Yeah, yep. same. If everything else gets shot down by the uh, space forces, because your ship comes in, Launches as all these drop pods to reinforce you, and then let me do your last because you get you get two volleys. That was the first volley. Let me do the next volley. So go ahead, save that to a. Let's see. Let me make a note for you guys. Add. No, not hand, boop, boop, boop. Add handout. Um. And then, well, and there's your choices. I'm putting, you guys see that note? Uh. Kill team transport choices. Where is this? Should be right above reinforcements. Uh, it's just blank for me for now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead and add to it. You guys should be able to edit it. Oh, okay. And then here's your next set. There, I've added it. Okay. I'm going to put it on the same reinforcement sheet, so... Okay. 
the scenic. There you go. So it should be under wave two. That's the additional things you guys can pick. You guys can pick one from this list. We pick one from that one? Yep. Should be in the same reinforcement list. I'm sure you saw that. Gotcha. I mean... The tin one might be good because we do know the orcs were using weird orc magic for stuff. Oh, like your, character doesn't, your character doesn't know that, but yeah. someone in the group does. Yeah, Who? true. We haven't experienced that yet. This that'd be session. that'd be Karnoth, right? Because Karnoth Karn has been here since the beginning. Karnoth and I, yeah. I did share the effects of those stones. Uh, Not the stones, but also the orc psyker who was experimenting on humans. Remember that? Oh, yeah, true, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, So there is an orc weird boy somewhere doing stuff. So Tim might be good for that. <laughs> is that what the uh, orcs call him? They call him the orc weird boy? Yeah, orc psychers are weird yeah. boys. Yeah, yeah, weird yeah. Boy. damn. They actually like have a brain sticking out of their head as well. God damn. Because they're so smart, their their skull can't contain the power of their mind. That reminds me of that one meme where it's like, Wojak and his brain is so big that he's sitting on it like a giant beanbag chair. Uh, yep, that's basically <laughs> weird boys. Yep. Yeah. And then I think, well, let's see. I mean, transport eight would also kind of be good just for how many vehicles we have currently, too. Yeah. Oh my god. Transport seven has a crate of void shields. Oh, so now the void shields are good. <laughs> They're fucking void shields, not regular shields. Yeah, the last time Void Shields was an option, you gave us crap with wanting to choose it. Now it's the part where Moth denies everything because he legitimately doesn't remember. I think there was something else in there that I didn't like, but I don't remember what it was. I mean, if we want to defend an area, 7 would be good. Eight, I think, would be good for just the longevity of our armored assault. Ten, I think, is good just because, well, one, we'll have some psychers in tow now, plus some defense against any weird boy shenanigans that might pop up, which we do know is on the planet and will probably pop up. Nine is less useful. We haven't really seen any aerial things that we got to take care of. Yeah, I'm just worried about Ten's full crate of hoods for one yeah. squad. <laughs> that seems like a giant waste. That's the only thing I really have against that entire one, though. Okay, and I re renamed your guys's um, Thunderhawk loadout with your current forces and supplies, so you guys can move your choices over to there. So that should keep status of everything you guys, everything that died. Yeah, so your Thunderhawk two plus the Devastator squad that joined Karnoth and that assault, they're dead. So and then your guys' supplies are split between one and three. And the rest of the stuff you guys are getting is drop pod inserted stuff, so you'll have to transport as needed to where you need it with your two transports. Uh, do we still have the tech priest? Uh, yeah, if you look that, at your, okay. Yeah, if you look at it, he's in trans. He's in Thunderhawk three. 
Or he would be. And we still would have. Do we still have, have enough engineering supplies to repair the dreadnought or the dreadnoughts? Uh, uh, he used all his supplies to repair currently. Um, Tesseract's dreadnought because he was pretty pretty damaged, so he's at full strength now. But let me do a roll and see how much he has left. Are you asking his status? I'm asking yeah, how much like, how much can he repair if need be. Oh. Uh, ignore that. Mm hmm Sir, I'm able to repair equipment. Yes, we fucking know. So the the tech marine looks at you and he tells you uh, we have enough supplies to service two more uh, dreadnoughts. I was able to be efficient with my gear and get your dreadnought in good standing. Well, we're getting four more dreadnoughts, so I think transport eight might be good. Eight or ten; those are my two choices. Uh, so we can select only one, I presume, right? Yeah, yeah, we can only choose one from this one. I say we go with. I say we go with ten, so that way we can handle and possibly even track down and destroy the weird boys that are causing all this orc magic bullshit. Well, one, we haven't seen that. One person saw that a hundred years ago. We haven't yeah, but... seen any weird boy activity so far. Uh, yes, we haven't. So far. Well, and the only thing kind of main fed right now is like the tanks and like the artillery and the vehicles, essentially. Yeah. Uh, we also we also are aware of the uh, the magic rocks that allow the uh, allow them to listen into communications and whatnot. Yeah, but that's like starting standard work stuff. It's uh, it is manageable. It's not something that requires an active psych or like a librarian intervention. Uh, in my humble opinion. Yeah, true. Uh, so something yeah, like an you, eight. You don't have a psych to to assess the situation now. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh. So something like. Uh, it, well, we do have four, like five. Uh, Dreadnoughts now, we have plenty of heavy firepower if we want to confront enemy vehicles, but we can't really confront like an entire armada of them. We have six dreadnoughts sucks. now. Wait. Because Transport oh, yeah, 3 is right. yeah, Transport 3 is yeah. bringing in four, we have a venerable, and then also, you know, near the grass. Yeah. Yeah, so six. Um, yeah, I say eight. Yeah, and we have uh, the the two uh, what are they called whirlwinds, which will probably be da battered and damaged uh, as well. So and yeah. we're gonna get a predator tank too. So yeah, eight eight sounds yeah. good. Eight sounds real yeah. good. Yeah, we're gonna need the maintenance for that. Plus, will help you know keep the thunderhawks operational. Does the predator tank have las cannons? Uh, it looks like it's geared out for medium and below uh, vehicles, so Got not it. particularly good against heavy, but against smaller things. Yeah, this variant, the one you guys picked up, is just a standard standard Predator tank. So it has. However, however, that same transport is also carrying three crates of anti armor, which is has last cannons and multi melters and plasma guns. So there you go. You guys can equip it, equip stuff on it. If you're trying to jerry rig stuff on it. Well, I think those are going to. The yeah, those are handheld. Oh, these are all handheld. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see that. So that would be your day two, getting the supplies and set. Are you guys building up defenses while you're getting these supplies coming in. Well, first of all, have we gone to the spot? where we want to position the whirlwinds for bombarding the fortress capital. Currently, you guys are all over here setting up an encampment. 
on this side. Well, my that's that's out of yeah. That I'm just thinking that's uh, out of range if we set up. Knowing that those there. transports were coming down, we probably should have went to the other side of the mountain range. Yeah, use auto auto, auto cannons on this one. No last cannons on the variant you're getting. Does anybody else think that's a good idea or a terrible idea? Say again? Should, knowing that these transports are coming down, should we have them come down to the other side of the mountain and then go set up a camp that they're, over there? They're not, yeah. they're not transports per se. They're literally, it's a, it's what? one, one off transports. They're like drop pods almost. All you right, well. Them? Knowing they're coming down, we should set up an encampment on the other side of the mountain. Uh, yeah, we only have um, two Thunderhawks to take them around. That'll take yeah, so like, did, did, yeah, did we plan to attack the formations as soon as we set up camp, or do we are we still waiting on the air bombardment? Do we like intervene and help the well, artillery? The the air bombardment is kind of a secondary thing. We don't really have to time our assault on the fortress with them. Uh, it's just nice, you know, if they can take out an armed column so they don't come up our rear when we're attacking yeah. the fortress. But we don't have to perfectly time our attack with them. Hell, if we just attack in the same day, it'll, you know, achieve the same effect. Yeah, you guys, if you want, if you want, to, you could ditch all this supply stuff and go with your transports and go try to infiltrate the capital yourselves. Nope, not what we were saying. No, I'm just saying those those are options you guys can do. So here's what we need guess, to do. Yeah. We need to we need to set up the whirlwinds so that they're in range of the fortress capital. Then when we're ready Mobler. to what the whirlwinds are mobile artillery that they can drive over and start shooting. Yes. Yeah, but they probably need a few minutes to set up, right? No. They're they're they're, they're they're like rhino chassis with the, the missile rack on top of them. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so they don't really don't need much set of time. They just go, and you can fire them off. Well, then either we're going to use the whirlwinds in hit and run, or we're going to hunker down somewhere and uh, put up defenses around them while they're firing. On day two, are you guys observing that field at all, the group? Yeah. These guys? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yep. So, <clears throat> throughout the second day, you guys just notice a metric ton of bombardment. You guys can see this from your guys' vantage point. You guys are way high up in elevation. So you, it's plain view. And you just see... This area being pummeled, and you see no fire coming out of that. At the end of day two, it seems that any guns in that facility fall silent. Okay. And where are you guys dropping every supplies? You're going to be doing it here. Boop. What? Are you moving your... Is your encampment going to be here or here? Yeah, I think we were we said here, right? Okay, just making sure. I'm I'm asking everybody else because nobody else seems to be commenting or saying anything. If we're gonna be attacking immediately or close to immediately, then yes, on the left side. Otherwise, have, on the right side. We do now have several tanks and dreadnoughts that is gonna be a pain in the ass to get over the mountain range. Yeah, no. I think yes. I think left rocks. side just the keep them in faster transport to the uh, artillery. So you guys can get yeah. so you can walk the stuff. Sure. What? Are you guys, are you guys gonna be walking your form or driving and walking your formation this way? No. We have drop ships. We can just fly over there, right? We have two. Why, why are you aiming at the spaceport? What are you even doing? Stop That's that. That's me. That's me. Yeah, stop that. I'm asking questions. We're not doing that right now. 
Okay. We're just we're just getting the drop pods situated on the left side of the mountain range versus the right side of the mountain range. Yep. End of day two, all the drop pods land where they're supposed to. Uh, your corresponding supplies are available to you. It's it's about dark. It's it's night when all this happens. Your captain wishes you farewell and good luck. Uh, he'll try to come back at some point in the future, and he goes radio silent from there on out. Okay, so I'm not too worried about the ship. It has a giant ass cloak on it. Yep, that's why he's going back up. So. And then uh, let me put up the, let me put up the guy in charge of this little thing. Pull him up. Blah, blah, blah. Is his middle name Kevin? Kevin, that's hilarious. I put him. He's not on the list. Weird. I have to refresh it. Or did I make him a handbook? I didn't. Hold up. I did make him. Okay, whatever. Character. Basically, that's all he says to you as he comes out of his uh, contraption that houses a lot of the supplies with... What did you guys choose again? Choices. He comes out of the tech priest transport. Who's this guy? Commandant Corvin, he introduces himself in charge of your reinforcements. He's kind of flamboyant, too, about it. He waves his sword around. He's like, I'm in charge of this regiment. Uh, <laughs> the regiment of tech priests. Uh, I guess he'd be in charge of like, all of the drops that got blasted out of the air. Yeah, pretty much. That's what he tells you. <laughs> okay, so that's what he meant. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to be like, are you, are you in charge of the situation now? I was going to go over and break his fucking legs. But no, okay. <laughs> no, no, no. He just tells you he's in command of all, all that has dropped and all that survived. And he's like, I'm glad to see you on the ground. How many of my craft survive the assault? Brasora, uh, was it? One, two, five, no, three. Three. And he ah, goes, ah, ah. he goes, very good, very well. Uh, who are you again? The Count. He's the one in charge of this mission, Commandant. I am Tunk Maureen. Ah, yes, I've heard of you. Well, what survives of my precious regiment? Uh, we dropped several 20 pod, three survived. Go figure. Uh, I've had worse situations. Uh, pray tell, what did survive? Can you gather up my forces? And he points it at uh, you, Moth, since he thinks you're waves to you like you're a servant or whatever. I break his leg. <laughs> you break his leg? I feel like even a commandant of any regiment would know not to fuck with a battle sister. <laughs> not to mention one with an Inquisition. Rosarius. Yeah, for real. <laughs> Well, like, this guy has to be absurdly stupid. Well, Moth, you're, battle sister. as far as you're aware, uh, Moth, you know this guy, super good at what he does. Just he's, You know him to be very oblivious to basically the command structure, even among his peers. All right, so I don't well, then what is he doing I as a commandant? 
I just step on his toes real hard and crush him. <laughs> Ow! And he goes, what was that for? He's wearing steel-toed boots. He, he calls you a servant girl. What was that for, servant girl? We are in charge of you, Capiche? You understand? Nay, yes. Pray tell, who are you again? Inquisitor. Well, no. Throne agent. That's the one I say. I don't say Inquisitor. Throne agent. And he seems she the sword. My apologies. I don't know who is here nor there. I just command forces where the Emperor commands. Yes. What is thy bidding? Get us up and running. As you wish, I will go inspect what remains of my precious regiment of forces. You guys seem to not have the situation under control, I see. I will take command from here. And he goes off. <laughs> and then... Oh, if he wasn't so good at what he does. If he's not good at what he does, he's dying here. Your your character knows he's exceptionally good at what he does. Well, just because he's been good in the past doesn't mean he'll roll well. Right. So, one of the Battle Brothers from the Storm Wardens approaches. Approaches. And he asks, uh, who's in charge of this operation? That would be me. I am Tonk Marine. Thonk, I've heard of you. Uh, I kind of people the... that today. I kind of like uh, your uh, reputation after that precedes happens, you. Yeah, I uh, point at Neo Dyson as the commander. We can not attend. He's the commander. He's a, he's like the senior officer right now, right? Yeah, Neil Tyson is a senior officer, but Thunk is technically in charge, as per Inquisitor's orders. That's correct. For right. some reason, yep. He he admires your character and loves him. He, he's the you're you're the one good thing he's proud of. Everything else, he's just an asshole. So <laughs> why he treats you like a baby? He he just he likes everything you do. It's a he, baby that he sends to the on the worst missions possible. That's correct. You always come back <laughs> stronger than ever. <laughs> And he loves that. He says, you're more brutal than he is, and he just loves it. You're like his second child, and he just loves you so much. It's because I killed his first child. Sure. Anyways, um... You ate it. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> hey, twins Eats in the womb. Babies. I, I ate my twin, alright? Also killed the mother, but, you know, that's... That's neither here nor there. Because I'm, I'm a big baby when I came out. It, it wasn't yeah, that, that's why you're, you're so big, yeah. <laughs> I always thought you just chest burst it out, but okay. He introduced himself. I am Brother uh, Axiom. Brother Axiom! <laughs> yep. Uh, Virlo snickers a bit at that, but no one notices. Do we? Yep. Uh... <laughs> uh Brother right. Axiom. Yep. I noticed. <laughs> right, tell me, what is the current situation of your guys' forces? We have heard very little up in this ship. We worried about you, uh, Brasora. Ah, uh, we fill them in. I see. Where will, you have, where will you have us sent? We'll make post Currently, eight. I think we're waiting a one more day, then uh, ground forces are going to launch an aerial assault on some tank squads. We should move in then, just while the tanks are distracted. If only there was a tidbit of wisdom, like an idiomatic expression, to uh, describe... What is happening right now? <laughs> Perhaps even an axiom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, too bad there isn't. Thunk knows many words. That none of those. There's no word that describes that. <laughs> Brother axiom. <laughs> I thought you liked that. <laughs> oh, oh, it's so funny. Oh, Goddamn. Anyways. Um. 
And he goes, Brother Karnoff, what is your readout of the situation? Um, we have, there have been sightings of uh, tank armadas, uh, multiple of them, at the very least, two so far. Uh, one to the east uh, has been fighting something, and one to the far east that would try, West pre now. presumably a second one, uh, that tried to close in on our location, on, on my location. Um, besides that, uh, many works in the capital. Uh, we are planning on launching a full-on assault uh, as soon as the bombers fly in. Excellent. Do you have any readout on the fortifications? Not. Uh, actually, what do we know? We uh, what did, did have the... visuals from the uh, scout drones we sent in that survived. Yep. I guess we should just play that recording. You can play that recording from. All right, <laughs> and he's gonna do readout and do rolls. See what he thinks of it. He goes perfect. Um, if we can scout more of their facility, I see some weaknesses in some of their triple axis defenses. There, orcs are very strange in how they defend things. I, they modified uh, this entire. Oh, I don't understand majority of what they're doing here, but it seems very straightforward. Do keep in mind this was several days ago at this point. Right. He says, that's no, that's no matter here. They're all, all specialties of dealing with fortifications. So, we're figuring out how to breach this triple defense layer that these orcs have. A lot of their stuff is ramshackled, but hard to tell. Especially with these orcs and their strange rocks. Got a lot of reports from the last group that assaulted this facility. And then he asked Persora, what did happen to that kill team? Which one? He asked about the one prior to this, because they are reassigned to you from uh, the, the current Inquisitor. So they don't. That was a hundred years ago to them. They don't know. They weren't around. Oh, Basically I wasn't. What happened to you? I have yeah. to ask Karnath. Oh. I wasn't part of that team yet. Uh, then, if the question is asked, asked to me, I just reply: one of them is in front of you, and the other is in the dreadnought. That is all that remains. Okay. Well, actually, a couple more, but they're not here. They have been reassigned to other places. And what of the block site? Uh, destroyed, supposedly. Oh wait, that we were supposed to destroy a black site on this planet, weren't we? Yeah, way that's where then. the orcs built their fortress on top of. I wait, thought no, but... we las cannoned the shit out of that. You did. Yeah, it was like a weapons facility. They, yeah, they they built on top of the remains. Oh, in the crater. And they built a port of fortification in a city. It's an entirely new orc settlement. Yeah, it's a hundred years ago. Yeah. So. Uh, for some reason, I thought that was a different part of the planet. Mm -mm. So you were in the same area as you were last that, that mission. In fact, the orcs, where you guys last cannoned the crap out of that location, they built that fortress on top of. Gotcha. Um, if you can gain more intel on their defenses, we could we can come up with a solution to breach their walls, to allow an assault party in. How about two we can send in our remaining. Yeah, yeah we can send in our remaining uh, skull probes, and we have the auspexes now, right? We can use those as well. Yeah, we asking, do have the auspexes. Yeah. You're asking him about the the whirlwinds. Yeah, would two whirlwind missile batteries with crack missiles help that? Huh. And six uh, dreadnoughts. So he tells you he he tells you the dreadnoughts and with powered with the whirlwinds devised with all breaches and other instruments to breach the walls. We possibly could breach these arc defenses to get to the center capital. Uh and he basically tells you that 
that the artillery and all that would be very exposed. Enemy any enemy formations would probably be wiped out in the ensuing battle. Um, so we have to go fast and hard, is what he tells you. If we were to utilize that. Thunk of greed. Right, he says. Yeah, he tells you based on based on our experience with orcs. We don't know about these orcs in particular. That'd be more Karnoth specialty. Uh, but from our experience, fast and hard. We'll be overwhelmed. Agreed. Yeah, we'll be overwhelmed in a matter of hours. So basically, tells you whatever the artillery you set up, kiss it goodbye. Uh, let it do its job, one and done. Yeah, or get, that's or, get, or, or, or get it out of there with air forces or whatever. Um, but he says it's very plausible. Uh, though he says with the current loadout of weaponry, uh, we're going to be very limited in what we can do. He says I need more of a technical readout of the surrounding area around the capital. So all we have is scans from the. He tells you he has scans from orbit. And then give them much readout of the orcs. They 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 densely covered it with jungle and other vegetation, so they they obscure a lot of the structure that's there that they would recognize to defeat and destroy. Um, he asked about any defenses you guys noticed, weapon wise. Uh, yes, lots of anti-air defenses. Ah, they, they also Good. have ghoul guns. Oh yeah, those. Yeah. What guns? They goo guns. They have, they have goo like a guns. Green goop in them that's highly explosive and acidic. It's oh. Hollywood acid. What is Hollywood? Uh, is Hollywood the, was uh, in, a mythical disaster zone, I think. Oh. Yes, it was. It was a disaster that took place on Earth long ago. Long before the Emperor took reign. What is Earth? And fixed things. Yeah. Well, they don't know what Holy Terra is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Holy Terra. Earth. Yeah, yeah. But, um, he said, the, 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 you see the... Ancient archaic human history. That, yeah, you see the team yeah. captain kind of, like, think for a while, has hesitated. Look, this definitely does complicate things. You say they have goo guns, as you used to call them? Describe them to me. They're guns. They're big guns that shoot goo. Goo hit. No more armor. Thank you, Sunk. Uh, You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> he over, he over to <laughs> please inform me what, what he is talking about. Uh, uh, they are big guns which shoot go goo. He, as he said. Exactly I what he said. And then I tried no to more describe armor. the way they use them as accurately as I can. Without using, they had big goo guns. <laughs> Which he, is very hard to do, considering that's pretty much exactly what they are. He says, well, this definitely complicates things. Uh, uh, Neil, Neil Tyson this. steps forward. You see these guns had sprayed acid. They destroyed parts of my armor, and I had to get refit. Yes, that definitely does change things. I wasn't getting into on what these orcs use per se. They they use chemicals of some sort. Have you figured out the source? Very interesting. This definitely complicates things. It's all he repeats to himself. Yeah, I I I think it's their piss. I'll be honest with you. Him? Yeah, he's a little annoyed. He no. Really... I huh? think the green goo is the orc piss. Because I oh, saw some guy standing over a canister at the orc camp. It looked like he was pissing into it, and it filled up with green goo. Oh, okay. So you're yeah, pissed. it's true. Interesting. Um, it advanced chemistry. Uh, we have to refactor all this in into our stratagem. Uh more more than likely, our armored push will fail on the oh, wall. Oh. Also, another important bit of information. They have spies. Interesting. Yes, uh, they have Gretchen's that are disguised as Imperial Guardsmen. 
Oh, and, and Near indistinguishable. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. Uh, radio calm silence is probably the best best bet. So, ah, yes, they were using radios. Is that what you call those rocks? Well, they, that's what the CG, That's his only solution to that problem. Is just don't use radio. Don't just don't use it. Forbear it among your forces. So, what are you going to do then? Use signal flags? I mean, considering we're not really spread out, we could just walk and talk and, to people to their and face. He, and he just kind of... Did you actually say that to him? Yes. And he called, just make a very intricate and timed plan and execute as ordered. No more, no less, and you'll be fine. No need for petty communications. Coordinate. <laughs> That's for mere mortals. You should know of this, brother. And he's kind of... Scoffing at you a little bit. Ah, of course. All us space marines is psychic. We have the telepathies. Is that what you said to the him as well? I'm assuming that's what he's insinuating. No, he's insinuating <laughs> that, that they, you should know what you're doing and you get things done at, according to time. On the, of the plan. You generate a good plan, you execute according to the, the carefully laid out plan. Yes, but surely you should know the importance of radio communications. Uh, proper axiom, if I may. Uh, <laughs> I have a... <laughs> I have a... <laughs> Shut. I have a potential uh, solution to the... Um, the goo guns, as they're called, uh, situation. Uh, we could potentially scavenge the... Uh, remaining, um, uh, like remaining tanks and vehicles from the past battles, retro and uh, and retrofit them to uh, just move. They don't. They don't have to actually be uh, possessing. They don't actually have to be threatening in any way. But they, uh, if they s make it seem like the an armada is coming, they might uh, divert their attention to that. And they might uh, point their goo guns at this uh, distraction. We can put our guardsmen in those uh, vehicles, and we ourselves can push in from some other direction, which would make the assault easier and probably less uh, dangerous. And he tells you, I've heard of this stratagem before, old Earth stratagem, from some vague war. But yes, I've heard of this strategy. Possible, but you need more time and set up to do such things. Time we do not have. So he's gonna think on it. Like, let me ponder upon this, and he walks away. Two days later. No, he comes back in about an hour or two. Uh, so in the hour or two that he's going off doing whatever he's going to be doing, conversing among his brothers how to best handle the situation. In the meantime, I uh, go ahead and like make sure that the guardsmen are equipped with the uh, anti-vehicle weapons and whatnot just to make sure they, they have the gear. So he comes back. Uh, pray tell. Brasora, Karnoth, whoever wishes to answer this. When does that... 52. Uh, I step up. Yes. Pray tell, when, does, when do those uh, Imperial forces with the aircraft, when are they going to be ready to assault? Uh, when do the bombers arrive? Sometime tomorrow? That was on the third day. Yes. And they asked, what, what, did you get a good look out in the readout of their formation of what they are carrying among their aircraft? Oh, they have all kinds of aircraft. Big ones, small ones. Not so big ones, not so small ones. He pats your shoulder. Thank you, Thunk. I no, quite welcome. Yes, I appreciate your efforts. 
Thumb just smiles. I mean, we did land there. Can I describe what I saw them have? Yes. Do I do that? Okay. This is uh, very interesting. Uh, are you in radio comms with this group? I think we're out of radio range at this point. They were uh, far to the west on a little island. Other side of the capital from here. Hmm. An airfield, you say? What's left of one? Interesting. If we get a hold of them, that might change the strategy into our favor. And pray tell, uh, whatever happened to uh, let's he brings up his logs. The fortress. What is what is this? Uh, gone. Non-issue anymore. Yes. What is it though? It was a hydrothermal dam that had a nuclear power plant strapped to the side of it. It's now rubble. Perfect. There is still the spaceport we have to worry about, though. They're sending supplies into orbit. All right, and he goes through his list. Converse with my brothers. You said spaceport? Yep. Hmm. Interesting. No concern to us. Orc spaceports are known to... Well, it might be of a small concern to you because the, the thing they're sending supplies to is the uh, the wreckage in orbit. The um, right. And he's going to yeah, he's gonna tell you what his thoughts are on that in a second. He rolled for... Okay. Rolled on that. Uh, yes. It's more than likely Orc trash. They usually have a trash service for some of their fortresses. They set up spaceports. Nothing to worry about too much. Do you see any warships or heavily defended airspace around this orc spaceport you speak of? Sorry, there's a port on the ground that's sending supplies into space. That's the spaceport. Yes, yes. I know of what you speak. And he kind of uh, gave me his backstory and some of the orcs he's encountered what they've done. They like to use some stations for taking out the trash. So he's asking, is this a true supply depot or is this a trash heap? That's what he's asking clarification on from you guys. I mean, what did the visual show on it? It didn't look like it was a trash heap, did it? So your visuals... You guys didn't penetrate too far in. You guys got shot down as you guys were entering the compound. You saw ships going to and fro from the location. Not much intel on the inside, other than there's a guy shooting chickens at your uh, transports. So you didn't see anything of value, per se. And basically unknown. Yeah. yeah, unknown. A lot of unknown, other than the guy with the AA chicken. Do you, do you describe this to him? Sure. Okay, so see, uh, bring up his data pad. Yeah, see, yeah, he hands the report to you. It is a, I can almost guarantee that is an orc trash depot. No concern to us. Well, okay then. Yeah, he says, then he asks, uh, where are you set up your siege line? This definitely does change things now that I know more information about the layout around this facility. Can you tell them where you're going to set up forces? Have you decided yet? I think it was somewhere around over here. Right, and he gives a suggestion. It says, set up at the mouth of this, this area here. And what we can do to lay low, do you guys have any trash or any other debris? He's asking you, Moth. Uh, that ain't my job. But probably from all of those ships that just rained down, you'll probably pick some stuff up somewhere. Perfect. So he suggests to you, and this is his plan, he came up with it, and I rolled for it, that he suggests that you guys, in the middle of the night, drop off 
whatever debris you can in that location near that orc spaceport as basically wall or coverage to defend your guys' whirlwind artillery batteries. You want to be, he says, you want to be as close as humanly possible outside the AA range of the capital with your artillery batteries and have your dreadnoughts and tanks good to go. So he says, the whirlwind batteries will distract from the north, the northeast quadrant, drawing the attention of all the orcs in the area, blasphemous fools, and we'll assault from the south. We can attack the main fortification, breach their gates. So, what say you? This is our suggestion. Make them gates go boom. Yes. Says we'll have one chance and one chance alone. Wouldn't it sure. be a better idea to use some whirlwinds to soften up uh, whatever targets we intend on hitting on foot? He tells you there's not enough batteries here to do all this you speak of. The best hope you have is to cause a diversion to draw the orc's ire away from the fortifications. Very well. And that, yeah, so he, he rolled pretty good for all this stuff, but that's what he tells you. Um, the orc spaceport will be of no concern other than it'll draw the ire that possibly the orc spaceport is lobbing shells at the capital. Orcs are prone to be stupid. So, if we time it well, perhaps the transport, the, perhaps the Romans and anyone there will survive, perhaps not. No concern to me. So. Consider them good as gone, is the way he tells you. <clears throat> and then he tells you where they should put their main effort. And I'll draw it on the map. I'll draw that in green. Said, and he says, looking at the layout of the land. Yeah. Large. Why is that not wanting to draw? Freehand, okay, there we go. It's looking at the layout of the land. You can land here. Boop. And then proceed north on this road at their main fortress. Everything we got. All right. So a, di a direct assault, okay. He says basically, Basically a direct assault, but looking at the ring of fortifications from your drone for surveillance and other things uh, that you brought forth through our group, that seems to be their weakest point. Their, their gates seem to be not held by much, as I've no fear of a direct assault. I think that would work. Yes. Yeah. Better than the non planes we had. He says, yes, if you can get contact with the aircraft, they can definitely play in part in this role. And he kind of tells you what he could have them do. Like, he would want them to attack on the northern quadrant of the capital. They are all going to die horribly by AA fire, but the ire of the orc formation will be to the north east of the city. Hence, all the orcs will be wanting to fight and boast, be boastful in all sorts of manner and be no one near the gates. We'll be basically unabated as we do our assault. Uh, uh, wait. Uh, are whirlwinds operated by space marines? Hmm? Are whirlwinds operated by space marines? Yeah, there's a, there's a crew already in there. There's there's, there's scout variants of space marines. Yeah, they're all in there. Mm. Not with him, per se, as the last group you guys brought with you, but yes, they're in there. Karnoff would be uh, hesitant, uh, resistant to the idea of a sacrifice, unneeded sacrifice of the uh, AA batteries. Yep. It's not possible. I mean, it's not a guarantee they'll be sacrificed, but it is highly possible they'll all be killed in the ensuing battle. I thought you might say that, so 
He says, I have a plan B as well. If we can gain contact with that formation, we can use their aircraft as a diversion and we can fly amongst them and drop our forces directly in the heart of the capital. It's a one in a million shot, but it's possible. Getting out is going to be the difficult part, is what he tells you. Not every mission has to be a suicide mission. But that's all he's ever known. Right, he says, yeah, he tells you the, the looking, he says, looking at your guy's complement of weaponry, artillery, it will not sustain a sustained fight against this capital. So we got to do some sort of insertion, some sort of diversion. Or some sort of stealth entry in place. So, I say doing an insertion giggity is probably our best bet. Because if we can take out the war boss, that might actually throw the rest of the orcs into disarray. I doubt it. It's possible. Oh, okay. and that's if we can get in. Yes, he says yeah. a high right. high chance of us being shot down within the first first fortification wall. I've seen these fortification air defenses. These orcs are fierce in their air defense. As if these humans modify them in some way to be worried about the skies at all times. It's rather rather hilarious, he tells I, you. I do keep in mind, this is our luck with with anti air that will no, he's 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 not counting in our walk with anti air, which is uh, guaranteed being shot down even when we're just flying normally. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just look what happened with Cardinal. He he's rolled. just coming back down. Are you fucking kidding? Yep, got shot down. He rolled. He rolled a ninety-nine. Sorry, he's gonna get shot down. Our our luck with flying to places is we're going down. Yeah. yeah. I like to think of it as falling with style. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we can transport the dreadnoughts and the tanks to the front of the fortress. Um, maybe even. Uh, hmm. Well, we don't know when the planes are coming. Yeah. Right. Uh, let's see. Uh, and then he goes. He's looking through. Well, we can always send somebody over and coordinate. He says you have transfer. He says you have mines and transfer turrets. Yes. Yep. We do. Okay. Two tarantula turrets and a crate of mines. Not much. Okay. We also have plenty of shields. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Brother Tonk. Oh, quite welcome, Brother Axiom. Yes. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Well, uh, you could say that this plan is uh, Occam's razor, then. Yeah. Simplest solution is often the correct one. Yes. Um, but he says, perfect. We can set up those uh, turrets to defend our rear if we go with plan A. Plan B, we can drop them in into the center if we survive. Create a circle of defense around us as we assault. All right. Uh, what do we like as the space marines? What what will be our role? What will what, like do we mar uh, storm in and just look for the war boss? Do we yeah, do some more some of us stay uh, behind yeah. and defend something? Are you talking to the the? Are you talking about him? Uh, to everyone, to him as well. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, I'm guessing quiet. we kill the war boss. Yeah, that's not his not his place to say. So he's just a siege expert, so he just stays quiet. Yeah, his job is siege experting. So he does all the siege. He coordinates the siege. He gets the siege done. He gets us in, and then we fuck up everything in there. Yep. All right. In both all senses right. of the word. Whoa, that's heresy. Smells like Slimesh. <laughs> Wrong kind of fuck up. I meant we mess it up. 
Well, you did and, say and both the other way. The word. <laughs> I yeah. said both. I said the both senses of the phrase. Yeah, the other no, one is fuck literal shit up fucking. as in we kick their ass, or fuck shit up as in we mess up royally and it goes horribly wrong. Oh. Oh, okay. Those two senses of words. You didn't mean fuck, using our non-existent warhammers. Thunks, I don't know about you, but Thunks Warhammer is still Nobody there in this operation. Nobody has a Warhammer. Come on. Uh, actually, they're power weapons. Uh, Relics so yeah, are and moles. There might be a hammer in the power weapon. Yeah, there might be a hammer in there. Yeah. So, I dig so, through the crate looking for a Warhammer. So you have Warhammers? You have two? Let me go roll for them. Nunk just pats his thunder hammer that's on his back. Good. Fully operational. So you five five mauls, five hammers, four axes, ten swords. God damn. Uh, are they uh, space marine sized or are they like human these sized? Are all, these are all space marine weaponry brought by the storm wardens. It's like we okay. brought our we brought some of our best weaponry to aid you in your battle. Uh, well, wouldn't they be using it then, the storm wardens? Well, there's five of they them. They have their and own three. Ah. Do keep my the, dude these has a squad extra. too. Got it. Do keep yeah. my dude has a squad of marines too. So he's hanging around somewhere with like five more people. Yeah, true. All space marines. Yeah. yeah. His own squad, and then the well, there was a David, an additional devastator squad. They died in the same battle on the fortress. So that's Thunderhawk two. Oh, I forgot about them. Mm-hmm. All dead. Yeah, I was gonna ask them about them later. Uh, all of them aren't dead. Okay. Yeah, they died. They died in the dropship. So. Uh, Ninety nine means bad things happen. Yes. And uh, I wasn't gonna kill you off screen, so that'd be derp derp. So I just killed everyone around you. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. you could have said, "Would any of you like to use a fate point?" No, if you're is, going no. to kill Dan. No. No, no. This is an event thing, so. Alright, so I, I guess we just prepare for the, in the assault. Uh, upcoming assault. So yeah. A3 doing that? Have you chosen uh, one? Yeah. We're just going to go with what the Commandant says to do. Oh, it's not the Commandant what? that says it. it oh. Was... Hell no, we're not doing what the Commandant says to do. The Commandant's <laughs> listening to us. Hell, Wait. I want to stick him in those whirlwind tanks and just let him be. Wait, well, who he is advising us fight. on how we're going to... Axiom. Oh, Axiom. yeah. Brother, Brother Axiom of Storm Wardens. Charge of, right. charge of his group. <laughs> uh, Commandant of his... Axiom. <laughs> yeah. Kevin Sire. over there. Sire. <laughs> Mistress, whatever your name be, rank. Um, Swear to God, Kevin, I will kill you. Yes. We, I gotta, yes, I, I hear you. I hear you. Everyone wishes death upon me. Uh, um, <laughs> glory I wonder to the why. There's any any waves of white flag about it. Says glory to the God Emperor. Anyways, as I was saying, I set up a perimeter around all glorious encampment here. I was informed of your guys' assault with my precious regiment. I hear you're going to sacrifice some of your precious tanks. Pray tell, may I lead this charge? We are not going to sacrifice them. We are. It is merely a chance. Not. It is merely a chance of sacrifice, but. Uh... He kind of waves a little white handkerchief at you. Ah. Oh. You guys always say such glorious things, but it always ends horribly wrong. Most of them are dead or scarred or whatever you call it. A white flag? What is this, France? Handkerchief. You know, no, it's literally, he's got a hanky. He has a handkerchief, he pulls it out and he waves it. and He kind of looks like a Frenchman, and his hat's kind of like aloof, and he's kind of flamboyant. Is he really short, too, and wide? He's very tall and lanky. Oh. oh. So um, he's more of a Charles de Gaulle and not a uh, Napoleon. He has he has a carry 
carries the saber, saber with him. Uh, Napoleon pray tell. also wasn't short. Pray tell, how many of my guardsmen survived the encounter? Where are my precious guardsmen on this world? One, two, five, <laughs> no, three. Who is this? Or more. Who is this? He is your boss. Ah, oh, yes, yes, thank you. You thank said you. you knew who I was. <laughs> Ah, uh, I forget constantly. Uh, let me see. No, you oh, don't sound like a good commander if you head. keep forgetting things. I forget peasants. My apologies. Um. Wow, you, you just called you me a peasant. You have presents for me? <laughs> where, yeah. where is Dunk's present? Give. And, and he hands you his handkerchief. There. This is shit. Dunk want you know this present very shit. I blow my nose in it. And uh, and wipe my ass with it, <laughs> and then I give it back, back to and him. And then hand it back to him, <laughs> making sure it's in his hands, Crush, <laughs> almost crushing his hand as I give it back. <laughs> Dunk go like Dunk return present. Give better present next time. Ah yes, thank you, Commander. And he takes off his glove, the handkerchief, and throws it on the ground. Uh, anyways, this plan you speak of, uh. I have a solution to your problems there, Karnoff. You not wish to sacrifice your whirlwinds and bloody affairs. Did my siege expert talk to you all? What do you propose? Ah, yes. Uh, you... I see that we have crack missiles, yes? Uh, we don't. I think. Yes. Do we? Didn't we grab a crate of crack missiles in yes, one of those did. things? You did, and do you guys choose it for the tanks, or do you guys choose it for infantry? Tanks, I we did. imagine. What? We, we don't have any, uh, any missile I think we did. troops. Choose it for tanks? Anyways, uh, yes. Who's in one oh. of the, uh, hold on. This is all we have. We, don't we do have not have missiles. crack missiles, no. No. There's those Who's didn't not part of them? It did, those did not survive the assaults? I see. No, we got two crates of bolter ammunition. Oh, pray fire tell. And crack rounds, so. Pray tell. Glory to the Emperor. Nothing survives that I need done around here. Anyways, let's change a bunch of things. Let's see what you have here. Are you, are you handing him a list? Give me your yep. list. The hand looks at the list. Spare parts, useless wastes. Shield generators? We might have something. Anti-armor weaponry? Interesting. Any of these weapons you're willing to part with, O oh, Space Marines, for your assault? Do you care? Uh, I, I think I made sure. Well, a uh, question is: Are the anti-armor weaponry human-sized? Uh, yeah, I imagine that one's all human. Yeah. All the so, yeah. And he looks at his list. Ah. By God, I'm going to do a roll here because he's looking through your list thoroughly. Oh, wrong roll. GM, roll 1D100. I was about to say, that's a really good roll. Ah! I mean, it was still a 1. Yeah, 1D10. Just uh, add another roll. 10, D10. And then that's it. Whatever. And then he looks through your list. Ah, oh, I see. Ah, oh, your shield generators. I can use them. And your, your weaponry. Um... How many guardsmen do you yeah. have of my regiment? My beautiful, glorious regiment? Uh, I think we have like 40. Two, five, no, three, four, more. <laughs> yeah, we I think we had about 40 guardsmen left. Uh... Between 7 and 40. Interesting. I'll take all the guardsmen you have then. I have an idea. Um, Which my is? C my CJ so believes in my plan, my cause. I'm all good and glorious, as you may know, Brasora. You sent me on many missions, and I've come back unscathed. Somehow. Yes. Anyways, my plan is simple. Despite how many anti... Yes. But so how many missions did you send me on to die because you hate me or whatever? Whatever Not. the case may be. We're always at odds, possibly. Or you may not know of me, and I don't know of you. 
But apparently well, you don't know who I am, because you called me a servant at one point. Yes. Pish posh on the meta. Anyways. What I propose. You pissed on her? Oh, Brasura, it would not take that if he's pissing on you. <laughs> Thunk killed last man who pissed on Thunk. <laughs> There was a man who did time thunk. Yep. So, it's a good point, Thunk. So, looking at your compliment of what remains of my regiment, I can modify your beloved Thunderhawks with those shield generators you have and your weaponry to destroy armor, thus creating gunboats. And we can suppress some of the armor you guys spoke of. How many shield generators are in those crates? I have no bloody idea. That was to the DM. Why do you not know? They are under your <laughs> command, were they not? Surely you know how many devices are in each of the things being sent down as they are under your purview. If you uh -huh. don't know how many there are, then how do you know there will be enough to upgrade our dropships? Look, some can count them out for you. One, two, <laughs> five, no, three, or more. Thank you, Sire. You're um, quite welcome. Yes. Um, no, pray tell. Well, we only have two dropships. <laughs> as yeah, long as more, there's more than two. More than enough, Basura, and he brings, shows you his documentation of what he's talking about for his schematics, for what he plans to do. And his tech I imagine he has a full PowerPoint presentation ready already. He does. He does. He, he absolutely <laughs> does. And he's presenting to you um, Microsoft so what PowerPoint. Because he says, unfortunately, I would just do it myself if not having to. I know it's a lot of information, but I must, all this hierarchy and rank, I must present things and get it approved by hierarchy. Since you guys are obviously in charge of this matter, he points to his toes. Did he just say con charge? Help. I yeah. don't think this man knows proper gothic. Imperium really digging at Sorry, the that's, barrel these that's days, high gothic they? for control and can, and in charge. Yes. Anyways, uh, <laughs> uh, madam, whatever. Uh, this is the plan I laid forth for you. And it will solve a lot of problems on the front, preventing any armor destroying your precious whirlwind batteries. And he tells you, all without sacrificing the capability of transportation. I just need all your guardsmen that remain. You may have them. Hold on. Siege guy. Can we get the siege oh. marine in here too? Brother Axiom. Oh, yeah. so you're, you're asking Ax to summon Brother Axiom. Oh, yeah. you, you wish to talk to Brother Axiom. I see. You both should talk and discuss. Since you're both giving plans here, <laughs> maybe you can improve each other's plans. Fortunately, supposedly under my command, but apparently not. As Space Marines act in d different ways than, than I understand. Very well, I'll summon your... I mean, you're not summoning them. I'm bringing him over. He's, he's like behind us. Just wave him over. And he looks over. Ah, oh, yes, very indeed. The man in the metal suit. Not like those thousands of you already. And they, uh, the Stormborn captain walks over. He asks, Yes. You, you summoned me, beckoned me. What is it? So what does he think of the plan that this guy came up with for, for the whirlwinds? Uh, he tells you it's an exceptionally good plan. He says the Commandant has always proven his worth in battle alongside our metal, even though as flamboyant as he is. He's very flimmy, but he should see Doctor. Yes. No, I think it means he's on fire all the time. Yes. Oh, he... that's even worse. You should constantly be dousing yourself with water. Do you want Thunk to piss on you? Thunk's piss can put out fire. Uh, no, that's quite all right, Thunk. Okay. Um, the man, the man has just come from a long line of Frenchmen or something. 
I know not what he speaks of. What's a French? Exactly. I have no idea. The guy goes on and on about his heritage sometimes. It's quite a bore. I'm so, confused who I'm talking to. <laughs> they both sound the same. I know, I'm Thomas. I'm bad at... But anyways, the captain, the guardsman... Another guardsman, the um, warden. But yes, I approve of the... The uh, commandant's... Request. Alrighty then. So, make haste. Let's get all that going then. Okay. Dominant's playing in action. Siege guy's playing in action. Okay, so. You guys think now would be a good stopping point? Absolutely. You guys are at the last stage of the battle, which is just attacking the fortress. Yep. Excellent. Thunk got tired of scaring guardsmen constantly all day. <laughs> I figured. So it was you who yeah. mentioned the disguise. <laughs> I'm trying to make sure we include Dan, our dude, in the last assault as well, so. Yeah. But it definitely mm -hmm. padded your guys' forces. It gave you guys a solid plan of how to assault this remaining installation. So. Yeah. And so Sweet. this is a more story driven session. Yeah. I, get better I mean, the last several have been. Have they? Yeah, this is, we've just... The last couple sessions have all just been prepped to siege this freaking capital. Well, honestly, we were, our sessions are infrequent, so I don't have... We don't yeah, have no. to actually it's, fight. That's totally fine. Yeah. It's a yeah, different yeah, change yeah. of pace than we're blasting and then blasting and then blasting and then, oh, we talk a little bit. No, now we're blasting some more. <laughs> no, but I'm definitely going to make the boss fight. Pretty mem uh, memorable as I can. I'll do some. Kiss your characters goodbye. We're all dying. <laughs> and no, I'm not gonna make him insta poppy killy, bro. But he is an orc that's lasted probably about a thousand years now, so he's pretty pretty beefy now. Oh shit, a thousand years. Yeah, he's pretty pretty old. How much uh, XP for this session? I'll give you uh, fifteen hundred for this. All right. So. The Commandant or the Warden? Which one do you like? The Storm Warden Captain? With those characters? Well, the Storm Warden didn't call me a servant, so I like him better. Okay. <laughs> yep, that might... That might be, you know... Colored slightly. Funny. What about you, uh, Yo Mug? Character you like better? Uh, I like the Gretchen Spy. The Gretchen Spy? Yeah. <laughs> oh, damn. That might be a little bit of heresy right there. Not gonna hey, lie. you just asked who my favorite character was. He didn't ask who Thunk's favorite character was. Yeah, true. Yeah. Thunk like Axiom better. <laughs> Axi yeah, I thought you get a kick out of the name. Uh, yeah, it's funny. Words of, words of wisdom. I was like, eh, yep, this would be perfect. No, yeah. no, Axiom just treated Thunk with respect. Of course. The Commandant <laughs> remembered who Thunk was and then immediately forgot who Thunk was. <laughs> yep. And called him a peasant. He got me a present! Yeah! Oh, man. But yeah, your character would know, Moth, that this Commandant is pretty fierce and always gets the job done. From your understanding of the several thousand missions you sent this guy on. Despite his idiosyncrasies. Just, yes, despite his very flamboyant character, um, he's pretty ruthless, too. <clears throat> you know him not to care about a single soul under his command or above him. Oh, don't worry. He's actually rolling dice now. He'll be dead by morning. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh. God damn. But yeah, so his plan was, I'm sure you got that, it was to use the, the Thunderhawks as makeshift gunships to prevent any armor or anything to come at your whirlwind will still be protect, protected up there. So, because if you look at the map, the orcs have to literally cross a river to even get to y'all. Yeah. But they have to literally come this way if they're coming after you guys with armor. Or whatever's on this side has to come after you. 
Yeah, from what I remember, there should be a whole tank division and artillery on this side. Yeah. You guys didn't check out the wall. You guys know of this one, but you didn't scout it out, as far as I know. You know of Dust Plume and it's heading south. Uh, well, didn't we, like, before I crashed, uh, didn't, weren't there, like, two different divisions? Uh, yep. Two different, oh. yeah. Yeah, over here. One was on the other side, and we've lost track of it. Yep. Yeah. There's two you lost track of. I'm looking at the map now. I have a, I have them on the GM layer. When you lose information on where they're at, I put them on the GM layer. All right. So we're good. Yeah, that way it's fair. Yeah. Sweet. I will yep. see you all next week. All right. All right. See you all next see week. Ya.